Have you ever found yourself staring at Facebook ads manager thinking there has to be a better way to improve my return on ad spend? Most advertisers right now are setting up 100% broad audiences and they likely have overly complex structures or overly simplified structures. They're not actually understanding how to segment their audiences to new versus engaged versus existing. And overall, there's a ton of wasted ad spend that is causing mass inefficiencies because we're leveraging AI a little bit too much, a little bit too early. So if this is a wake up call for you, if you resonate with all those things that I just listed, then listen up because I'm going to take you through my exact method for how we have solved this dozens of times for over a hundred brands at the Moonlighters just in the last year alone. And the coolest part is no one else is talking about this in the industry right now. And by the way, we've applied this strategy to dozens of different niches, everything from women's beauty, fashion, and wellness brands to tech brands, to SaaS products, to men's fashion brands all across the board, all different niches, all different spends, all different shapes and sizes. So without further ado, I'm going to pull into my Facebook account and let's get started. All right. So now that we're in our Facebook ads manager, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do what I call picking the fastest horse. This is M1 of the M3 method. Picking the fastest horse is how we instantly, I literally mean instantly squeeze about 15 to 20% improvements in return on ad spend in your ad account. Once you go inside your ad account, I want you to select a pretty wide day range. You can go anywhere from 90 days, 180 days back, but it should be pretty big. Just don't include things like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and there are holiday periods. You want to make sure we just have a chunk of a date range. Then what you're going to do is go to the top right corner and click create new report. Once you create this report, you're going to go to the right right hand side and you're going to type in day. We're going to break everything down here by day. So now what we have for the first time in this ad account is every single campaign that we've run every single day, these campaigns have run, and then we have to do some crafty stuff. The next piece, we just need to make sure we have the most important metrics in here. I'm not going to clean this up too much, but we have to have amount spent purchases, purchase conversion value, AKA revenue. And then if you want to also add things like add to carts or initiate checkouts, that's fine as well. Once we do this, we are going to export this found in the top right corner. We're going to push this as a CSV and click the export button. Next thing we're going to do is open up a Google sheet. This could be basically a blank Google sheet and click the import button here, click upload, and then upload your sheet that you just downloaded from Facebook ads. You can go ahead and replace this spreadsheet. Now we have a ridiculously long 500 row sheet, depending on how big the date range is and depending on how many campaigns and how many days you've run your ads, this can get much longer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the end. So wherever there's a blank cell here, and we're going to type in day of week, we're then going to use a very simple formula. And I understand this is complex. I've probably lost you by now, but if you actually care about driving your return on ad spend higher, then this is what you have to do. We're going to go into the column that we just created. We're going to type in equals weekday and then select the day that's in column B. Now we should see weekdays represented as numbers. We're then going to highlight our entire table here. We're going to click the help button and we're going to insert a pivot table. We're going to do this in a new sheet and the pivot table is now going to have all our data aggregated in one place. It can be really easy for us to digest. Now you might imagine where I'm getting at now. We're going to add a row as day of week, and then we're going to add values for all our most critical metrics. Keep in mind, you cannot use pre aggregated metrics. You can't use cost for purchase. You can't use ROAS here. Everything will break because these are sums. So you need to recalculate these on your own. So I'm going to do this in light speed. So we're going to add amount spent. We're going to add purchase conversion value, and we are going to add purchases. This is going to get me the most base data that I need. We're just going to reformat some things here. I'm going to make a couple new columns and clean this up. So I'm going to go ahead and build my CPA and my ROAS metrics here. This is going to give me a little bit of better insight as to what's going on. My ROAS is just going to be my revenue divided by my total spend. We're going to hit that down the board. And my CPA is going to be just a touch different where it's going to be amount spent divided by purchases, push that down the board. What we're then going to do is we're going to highlight all of this and we're going to conditionally format. This is because my brain isn't that sharp. So I want to make sure I'm not missing any detail. And what can I see right away? Holy crap. There are certain days of the week that literally double the performance of other days of the week. And in this account right here, we are not spending more on the higher performing days of the week. Just think about this. We're spending around $5,000 every day of the week on average, but every day of the week doesn't convert at the same return on ad spend. So why are we spending the same amount every single day of the week? It doesn't make any sense. The key that I want everyone to focus on here and what I would focus on if I was managing this account right here is I would shift a significant amount of spend from day one, which is Sunday. So you could also just make this easier on yourself and type in Sunday, drag this down, and then you'll have each day of the week. So you can see really clearly this brand converts better Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We should push most of our spend 
to Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Really clean, easy analysis. If we do this, we're not going to see the 17x return on that spend hold, but what we will see is it won't be as diminishing as spending more on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. We'll see it perform better on Fridays, even if we increase spend by a significant threshold. Now, I wouldn't actually stop here. For every brand that we work with, we have this massive dashboard of all our reporting with every single breakdown that you could possibly imagine. And what I would do if I were you is I would create this for yourself. We only do this for our managed clients at the Moonlighters. And by the way, if you actually want to work with us, if you want to potentially become a client or just apply, worst case, you take a 10 or 15 minute call with us and see if you're a fit. You can go down below. There's a link in the description, the moonlighters.com slash apply, go click it completely free call. If all goes well, maybe you could be one of these clients that I'm going to show you here today. Worst case scenario, you take a 10, 15 minute call. So we use this dashboard right here that has hundreds of different breakouts. And the things that I want you to focus on that I call picking the fastest horse, AKA M1 are age, gender, device, platform placement, and landing page breakdowns. So we have this here. And what I would make sure with this brand in particular is that we are spending when we're most likely to make money back. So for this brand, an example, I would make sure we're spending a little bit more on 25 to 44. Now this is a managed brand that we actively manage. And you can see we in fact are doing that because 18 to 24 has the worst return on ad spend in this account. We are spending mostly on 25 to 54 that have the highest return on ad spends in the account. I would guarantee if you all looked at your analysis of this, you're going to see the same spend every day of the week or just about within 10%. You're going to see closer distribution on ages than you actually expected. And you're not going to see the distribution on even male or female or platform and landing page that you would expect to see as well. So you have to be very, very careful because if you overspend in the wrong places, you're putting yourselves in a terrifyingly wasted ad spend scenario. And that's what happens if you're advantage plus everything, broad everything, set and forget. That is why actual media buying still is one of the most important things if you care about your growth in performance marketing. Now, the second thing that breaks everyone's heads that no one's really actually doing right now and that you should be doing if you actually wanna run profitable ads at scale, this is the exact structure and system that I would set up in my ad accounts. M2 is a predictable system. And you need to have a predictable system in order to actually scale your advertising today. How do we set up our advertising? You're gonna see four buckets here. Scale, test, retarget, and retain. I'm gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna work our way up to the top. So starting at the very bottom, retain. This is how you keep your existing customers. Your existing customers are the lifeline for your business. You need to be selling a product that can be repeated over and over again. If you're not, then move up, Skip 30 seconds in this video, but I want to give you the two audiences that I always recommend with two caveats. First, we are always hitting 180 day purchasers and we're hitting all time purchasers. If you have more breakouts, if you're a larger brand, then I would recommend 90 day, 180 day, and then all time purchasers. You could speak to each of these cohorts fairly similarly, and you're managing these on a frequency. So what that means is that when you're in your ad account and you're looking at your retention based campaign, you're going all the way to the right and you're adding the column frequency, which is the average number of times each account center account saw your ad, AKA people. We wanna make sure that when we're looking at this from a retargeting or a retention perspective, that over a 30 day period, it's no higher than 15. What that means is the average person saw your ad 15 times in 30 days. You could use it a 30 day benchmark or a seven day benchmark of five is also a pretty good reasonable mark to use. The next piece that we have here is retarget. I have a bonus in here in addition, so stay tuned for about 30 seconds. Retargeting is defined as people who have been to your site, made some sort of notable action, but have never purchased. This is critical. They have never handed you dollars. There's a huge difference between someone who is interested and someone who is actually willing to pay. For example, everyone that's watching this video thus far is probably interested in working with me and my team. But are you actually going to work with me and my team? Probably not for a variety of reasons. Maybe you think you can do this on your own. Maybe you think you've hired someone better than us. Sure. But there's an interest that doesn't mean you are actually ready to make the purchase and come on board and work with us. When it comes to your retargeting campaigns, you need to focus on re-engaging the people who got almost to the purchase to keep them engaged for the longest amount of time, provide as much value as you can. And the way that we do that is first, we have our own separate retargeting campaign. And within that retargeting campaign, I typically like to break this out into three buckets, 14 day Facebook and Instagram engagers. If you have no Instagram following, no Facebook following, make this 30 or even 90 days. 14 is usually the benchmark that I like to run with. Next, I would go 30 day site visitors. Anyone who's been to your site over the last 30 days, and then add to cart or initiate checkout over the last 
90 days. With each of these audiences, this is a key point. With each of these audiences, you're not just setting the normal Facebook audience. For example, when you set these up, most people are going to set this up and set up one single audience and they're going to create a customer list or they're going to create a list of people over the last 30 days and upload it or use the pixel to create that list over the last 30 days. They're then going to click this button, they're going to set this and they're going to run away. Now I already spot three things wrong right here. First, audience definition is broad. That's a mistake. You never want a retargeting or a retention audience to actually be broad. So what we would do is we click this button down here and we click further limit the reach of your ads. Once you click further limit the reach of your ads, you're going to click switch setup. Clicking switch setup moves your audience from a suggestion to an actual interest group. So what we do next is we take our custom audience and we have to click a second thing. We have to unselect use as a suggestion. And then we're going to see the audience definition drop like a stone. And the third thing you want to do to set up proper retargeting and retention audiences. So this is applying to both is you want to have this from both the website and you want to have your Clavio or your CRM uploaded list in here as well. So we are not doing this one time. We are not just having our website uploaded into here. We're having both the website data and the Clavio data because we're going to enhance the pixel information to make sure that we're a little bit more bulletproof. So we're actually targeting the people that we're supposed to be retargeting and supposed to be retaining. Oh, and by the way, pro tip, exclude your retention audiences from your retargeting audiences. So you want to make sure that all of these audiences are excluded from these audiences up here. That is really, really important. For example, my 180 day purchasers audience should be excluded from my 90 day add to cart audience. So when I go into here, I want to make sure just like I'm showing you here, and I know this is blurred out for calling confidentiality, but we are excluding the purchasers and we are including the actual initiate checkout here. Popping back to the flow chart. And by the way, if you want this, I always include a link to all of these flow charts in the description below. Just click that link. You can get it 100% for free. So scrolling up a bit here, we have our testing and scaling framework. This is so critical for everyone to understand. If you don't understand this, if you can't follow this, if you do this wrong, you are never going to find ways to graduate the top ads and get them the most amount of spend. There is something I've noticed recently, especially when I'm reading comments here and when I'm hearing anything else on all the discovery calls, all the audits that we do, I'm seeing a lot of folks graduate ads too early. So keep that in the back of your mind as I walk you through this framework. The core of this framework is we have a single prospecting CBO campaign. This prospecting CBO campaign Campaign, also known as campaign budget optimization is the core of the entire account within this prospecting campaign. We have broad packs. These packs, which I've dated here by month are whenever you upload a new round of creative. I don't care if you upload a creative today and three days later or today and tomorrow or twice in the same day. Anytime you upload creative, no matter how many creatives are uploaded, whether it's two, four, 20, I don't care. You just want to make sure you're uploading those as individual packs because it reduces the learning phase for every single part of this campaign. Once you create your broad packs and you create your creatives within those broad packs, take a lot of time, work on those creatives. They're really, really important. We're then going to take the winning creatives and we're going to graduate those up into the ASC scaling campaign. And we're also going to graduate those into our interest groups down here. If we have creative number one here, that is a potential winner. It goes into the winner's bucket. This is an imaginary bucket. It doesn't mean anything. This winner's bucket then graduates into two different places. First into an interest group and two into a broad prospecting campaign. I'm going to start with the interest group. This is the third part of the M3 method. One of the most critical things that you need to be doing that almost everyone is telling you the exact opposite. I've seen more videos than anything about interest targeting is dead and broad is the only way to go. Broad is great. Broad's how you scale. Interest is how you inform broad on how to scale. Interest groups actually allow us to find different pockets. So we're able to target thousands of different interest groups that are going to be very different from your little broad lane that you're in. So even though broad sounds big, it's actually very narrow. So what you need to do is you need to use your interest groups to inform the broad of what is actually going to scale for you. The biggest brands in the world use both broad and interest to scale at the same time always. And so we're 
we're taking our winners and we're plugging them into our interest groups because we're giving these interest groups the best shot to actually win. And then what we're doing is we're taking those winners and we're also graduating them into the mega scale campaign. The mega scale campaign, the scale campaign, whatever you're going to call it, is a 100% broad campaign. It is a single ad set single campaign with only your top performing ads. If you don't have top performing ads that are exceeding your target, do not make this campaign. I hope that is loud and clear. This is strictly for ads that are dominant. This is for ads that are above your target and you're going to keep those ads active in your test campaign, in your prospecting CBO campaign down here. You're just adding them to the ASC so they can live in two places at the same time. It's completely fine. It's not going to interfere with anything. And you're guaranteeing additional spend on your top ads because in this prospecting CBO, you're setting your campaign budget right here and you're allowing that to spend across potentially hundreds of different ads and that's what all the best brands do. But if you have an ASC, you only have winners here and you're guaranteeing that this spend is going to a very small pocket of top, 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 ads. Once you build out this entire framework, which includes the M2 and the M3 of our current system and strategy, and you have new customers focused here, you have engaged customers focused here, and you have retention, aka existing customers focused here, you're going to know for sure when you're spending money in new, how that return on ad spend is for you and how much you can scale. You're going to know for sure that when you spend more on retargeting, your engaged expenditure goes up. And for sure, when you spend on existing and retention campaigns, means your existing customer expenditure increases. Now, how can you track that for sure? And this is the biggest bonus tip. When you're in your ad account and you go to your breakdowns, you're going to click on audience segments, and then you're going to go to the very bottom of your account. You're going to be able to group everything together. And what you're looking for is your new audience spend, your engaged audience spend, and your existing customer spend. And you want to generally make sure you're not overspending on engaged or existing, and you're pushing the majority of your spend into new audiences. And as you can see right here on my screen, that is exactly what we're doing over the last 30 days for this brand where we spent over $280,000 on new, only $7,000 on existing and $22,000 on engaged audiences, all key to actually drive net new acquisition. And if your agency's not doing that or whoever's running your ads isn't doing that properly and showing you these breakdowns, red flag, red flag, I would be careful. If you got value out of this video, please let me know in the comments below. I'm back to trying to comment to every single comment, trying to answer all your questions as long as they're relevant. And if you want to see a more detailed guide on the strategy and structure that I just broke down here. Click this video where I break down the new way, the exact setup step-by-step -step, that I am running in terms of structure specifically. You can get it right here.